Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to session 9 of training and development course. Today in this session we will try to touch upon the topics related to leadership training essentials. We will study how to nurture leadership skills in employees and by means of some real world examples of successful leadership development programs we will try to see how they contribute towards the organizational success as a whole. So, let me just give you some introduction about what is leadership. So, leadership is something which is crucial for organizational success as it drives innovation, manages organizational change and guides companies towards the goals. So, organizational leadership is basically a broader concept, concept than the than any other form of leadership and in, encompasses the leadership skills and qualities required to run a company or any business. So, effective organization leader bring a lot of unique qualities in the organization. They can be proficient in creating a communication and they can be very very proficient in creating and communicating a vision to the organization. There can be different leadership styles which can be adopted by the individuals in the organization which can make the individuals follow the direction they set and lead the organizational change. So, leadership plays a very vital role in shaping the personal and organizational success by transforming individuals and teams, driving them towards excellence and achievement and creating a shared vision that aligns team members and provide a sense of purpose and direction, resulting in improved performance, productivity and innovation. Effective leadership skills such as communication, collaboration, motivation can help organization and individuals thrive despite obstacles. There can be different kinds of leadership styles, we can have visionary style, charismatic style, democratic style, laissez fair style, autocratic style also and each of the styles unique you know each of the styles bring some uniqueness to the organization. So, visionary leaders inspire and motivate teams to work towards a compelling dream. They bring a lot of motivation to the people through their energy, through their ability to connect and through enthusiasm. Similarly, other styles of leadership also bring a lot of advantages on the table. So, organizational le leadership is a multifaceted job requiring experience with planning, time management and understanding the goals and objectives of the organization. It is about understanding the vision and mission of the organization. So, they bolster teamwork, promote cooperation and set reasonable goals by making the most of the unique set of skills found in their teams. So, in conclusion leadership is cru crucial for the organizational success and definitely it can really prove to drive motivation, change and many positive things within the organization. Now, let us have a, a quick look at understanding the role of leadership in organizational success and here are some startling statistics for leadership development and organizational success. 
According to a survey, 85% of organizations acknowledge that leadership development is crucial for their future success. However, 71% of the organizations report that leadership is lacking in the organization. Only 19% of the organizations say that they are very effective at developing leaders. Developing the next generation leaders is the top challenge for 55% of the CEOs. 63% of the millennials, that is generation Y people, believe that they are not being recognized as future leaders quickly enough. And 83% of them are concerned that their workplace doesn't have or doesn't develop their leadership skills. A staggering 79% of the employees will quit after receiving inadequate appreciation from their managers. This again refers to some kind of incompetence of the leaders. So, if leaders are not developed properly or they do not uh, possess the right kind of leadership skills, it can really prove to be very, very counterproductive for the organization in terms of higher attrition rate and people leaving the organization. The number of women on board of directors is only 15%, which shows that there is lack of, uh, you know, there is uh, there's, there's a lack uh, or say there is uh, no combination of diversity, there is some element of glass ceiling or something. Only 35% of the employees identify their boss as a major source of stress at work. But 80% say that a change in direct management or leadership has an impact on their stress level. So, many of them even report that the change in direct manager and leadership has an impact on their stress level, which would mean that if stress level, I mean their stress level increases as a consequence of the leadership with the, who they are uh, dealing with. But then yes, certainly if there is some kind of change of leadership, it would impact them in positive or negative way. So, there, ca there can be n number of such uh, things like for example, 58 percent of the organization's top priority is closing leadership skill gaps and 43 percent of the organization's top priority is closing gaps across leadership levels. Just 10 percent of spending on corporate leadership training delivers corporate result. So, if you are just spending 10 percent of spending on corporate leadership, training, it results in phenomenal results. It definitely has an impact in terms of concrete results which are able to be obtained as a consequence to it. Now, let us talk about effective leadership programs and what do they comprise of. So, when we talk about effective leadership programs, what should they actually comprise of? What should be the, uh, what should be some of, what should be some of the important key components of effective leadership programs? So, it is about at number 1 is about identifying the leadership competencies and skills. So, effective leadership training programs should begin by identifying the key competencies and skills required for successful leader. Now, there can be multiple skills which may be required to be a good leader. Some of them can be, you know, good communication skills, then it can be critical thinking skills, there can be time management skills also, there can be uh, skills related to mentoring the team members adequately, then it can be about uh, the skills pertaining to teamwork and collaboration. There can be some thing related to networking also, there can be some skills related to professional ethics also. So, there can, there can be multiple such skills which may be required at the level of the leadership uh, positions. So, effective leadership training programs should always begin by identifying the key skills and competencies which are required to be present in successful leaders. So, first of all it will begin by identifying these skills which may pertain to adaptability, time management, mentoring, ethics, diversity and continuous learning. By identifying these trainings, organization can tailor the training programs to address specific areas where leaders need improvement. 
So, we need to identify these skills and then we need to adequately plan for the training programs which would accommodate all these skills and which can help the managers make a lot of difference. For example, there can be some element of time management incorporated in the leadership program which is meant for them wherein people are taught about how to manage their time more effectively and how to really become more productive at work. Then there can be some kind of uh, trainings and some kind of elements of you know good communication skills at the le level of top leadership in the organization. There can be some kind of uh, program customized and tailored according to the needs of the audience and some element of critical thinking skills can be incorporated in the training that is given to the people. Then after we have identified the skills the next thing could be providing opportunities for hands on experience and practice. So, leadership training programs should provide opportunities for leader, leaders to participate and practice their skills in real world scenarios and especially to develop the cognitive skills. We may have different kinds of skills, but especially when it comes to leadership skills and it, especially when it comes to the skills which are to be given to the medium to top level management uh, organizations uh, positions. It is important to incorporate more of such exercises which raises the cognitive skills. So, this can include the role playing exercises, simulations and also the case studies. Then we can have hands on experience and practice which help the leaders to develop their skills and building confidence in their abilities. So, leadership programs usually encompass a whole host of hands on sessions, simulation sessions, introspection sessions and also some of the exercises and sessions pertaining to you know awareness. So, the idea is to build confidence in their abilities and also to uh, the idea is to hone their cognitive skills by means of n number of critical th thinking exercises, team exercises, so on and so forth. So, we should uh, try to offer continuous feedback and coaching. You know, effective leadership training program should include regular feedback and coaching. This can include performance evaluation, wherein the individual is assessed on various parameters. Those key performance indicators are communicated to the people beforehand and then they are assessed on the basis of those KPIs. Uh, to show that whether the training program which was imparted to the people was successful or not. Then performance evaluation can happen by taking into consideration and by employing some kind of methods such as behaviorally anchored rating scale. There can be multiple approaches that can be followed for performance evaluation of the individuals including 360 degree feedback wherein the evaluation happens at different levels when the evaluation happens at different levels from various people this feedback is taken. For example, your superior also gives the feedback, the sub subordinate also gives the feedback, the peers also give the feedback, the customers also give the feedback. So, we can have several such performance evaluations, we can include mentoring programs and coaching sessions also for the people. Then feedback and coaching help the leaders identify the, identify the areas of their improvement and refine their skills over time. Then as I mentioned in the uh, previous set of slides also that it is about encouraging the self awareness and emotional intelligence. So, it is believed that those leaders who are self aware are able to perform better. So, effective, lead effective leadership programs should encourage self awareness and emotional intelligence because the people who have high level of self awareness and have a high level of emotional intelligence, they are better equipped to manage uh, emotions and they build strong relationships. And training programs can include assessments, workshops, coaching sessions to develop self awareness and emotional intelligence. So, I have been taking the example of emotional intelligence wherein uh, some kind of self awareness exercises can be given, some kind of self regulation exercises can be taught to the people, there may be several instances of uh, 
you know, giving them some exercises to keep them positively motivated towards their goal. And also there can be some exercises which promote empathy among them. Then there can be several exercises promoting the element of uh, social skills among them. So all these things will, will eventually contribute to the overall holistic development of a leader as a leader, right? So effective leadership training program should also include such elements. Then we have strategic thinking and business planning. So effective leadership training program should teach leaders how to think strategically and plan for the future. And includes communication techniques, decision making under pressure and business planning. So a lot of unforeseen circumstances happen. The environment is also very, very dynamic. In the competitive business uh, landscape today, it becomes very challenging to take decisions. So how to approach at the decision, how to, how to evaluate the various alternatives which are given to you and how to actually arrive at the decision point is something which assumes a lot of significance. Then some kind of assertive communication techniques can be taught to the, you know, taught to the leaders so as to groom their skills in the best possible manner. So strategic thinking enables leaders to make sound decisions and drive organizational success. Then it's about resolving conflicts and stress among teams. So effective leaders are skilled at re resolving the conflicts and reducing stress among teams. They listen to different opinions, they find fair solutions and communicate with empathy and respect. So stress management and conflict handling mechanisms in the organization assume a lot of significance and this, they should essentially form a part of the leadership training programs which are imparted to the people. So training programs should teach effectively the uh, concepts of leadership, conflict resolution techniques and stress management techniques also. Leaders who can make sound decisions under stress are invaluable assets to the organization. Therefore, more emphasis should be placed on developing the cognitive skills of the leader. When we say cognitive skills of the leader, it would certainly relate to the decision making skills of the individuals. And the element of critical thinking has to be there in order to develop this cognitive skills. Then it's about mentoring and coaching. So leadership is about developing others as well as oneself. So effective, effective training programs should emphasize the importance of mentoring and coaching the team members. So leaders who invest in the growth of their team foster loyalty and also create a culture of continuous improvement. So mentoring and coaching certainly they help the team members reach their full potential and contribute towards the organizational success. Because a continuous improvement can be brought about by adequate mentoring and coaching to the individuals. It is often seen that the leaders juggle with the time management. They are unable to understand what should be the priorities in terms of time management. And they juggle multiple responsibilities and they have to manage their time very, very effectively. So leadership training should include the element of time management also, wherein several techniques and strategies are taught to the people regarding how to manage the time and how to become more effective. Right. And a lot of emphasis has to be placed on creating an individual and transforming an individual to a highly productive and high performance individual. These days there is a concept of hypo employees in the organization. So what are these hypo employees in the organization? They are high performance people working in the organization. High performance uh, people working in the organizations can only be, uh, you know, can only be generated and high performance work culture teams can only be created in the organization in case we are giving good emphasis on creating a culture full of effective time management practices in the organization. Uh, next we have diversity and inclusion. So the entire lecture, uh, previous lecture that is lecture 8 was devoted towards diversity and inclusion wherein we talked about how should leaders try to create an inclusive training environment in the organization and how should they try to create a culture full of 
diversity and inclusion. So there has to be a lot of DNI initiatives that are to be taken in the organization. But first of all, the leaders have to be trained on these aspects so that they percolate it deep to the other levels also. So activities and discussions on diversity and inclusion help leaders create a culture where everyone feels valued and respected. Then is about continuous learning and development. Leadership is an ongoing journey, not a just destination. Effective tra training programs encourage leaders to embrace continuous learning and self-improvement. So, leaders should be exposed to latest leadership theories, trends, best practices to stay relevant and drive the organizational success. Now, here are a few examples of hands-on experience and practice opportunities for leadership training. We will begin with outbound experiential leadership training. This approach involves immersive experiences which challenge participants to develop their leadership in real world scenarios. It fosters a deeper understanding of leadership concepts and their real world applications by equipping leaders to navigate uncertainty with finesse. Then we have leadership challenge and simulation. These exercises mimic a real life scenario and require participants to make decision, solve problems and lead teams in a risk free environment. Then we have leadership activities and games. So we can have several games such as uh, the games which are meant for improving the skills related to critical thinking then games related to enhancing the communication skills of the individuals to increase the element of empathy in them to remain them to keep them motivated. So a lot of challenges and fun related activities can be incorporated in the leadership programs to make everything a fun for the individuals. Then uh, role playing exercises, simulation and case studies, we have already discussed them. These activities allow leaders to apply their skills in practical scenarios and foster a deeper understanding of leadership concepts. Then we have on the job experience as managers progress in their careers, they should be given opportunity to lead teams, projects, etc. and uh, whatever they have learned in the real world situations. Then we have leadership workshops and training programs should be given to them. Then a lot of mentoring and coaching activities must be uh, meant for them to hone their skills and to improve their skills on certain domains. Then we have a lot of self-assessment and personal development planning. So first of all, the self-awareness exercises must be communicated to them and we have several psychometric assessments. Like for example, we have uh, several personality tests to make an indi individual understand the kind of personality he possesses. And then we have uh, several uh, signature strength assessment tests also which help us in understanding our strengths and definitely when we get to know about our personality in a better manner, when we get to know about our signature strengths in a better manner, we are able to leverage the strengths in the area that we would want to and uh, there are several such traits and there are several such strengths which an individual is probably not even aware of despite possessing them for a long time, he may not be aware of. So all these things have to be communicated to him. And uh, how do we get to know about these things? We get to know about those things by incorporating the element of self-assessment, psychometric assessments and developmental planning. Then we have several uh, team building activities and workshops that may be uh, conducted from time to time. Then we have conflict resolution and uh, negotiation workshops. So these are also some of them because uh, they help in building positive relationship with team members and stakeholders and uh, therefore these uh, activities can have a vital role to play and prove to be highly productive for the organization as a whole in achieving the objectives that they are striving to achieve. And then there can be some other activities and there can be some other set of workshops for them. Like for example, we may have uh, diversity and inclusion workshops for people. Uh, wherein the individuals are putting their efforts to uh, make the people sensitize and sensitize the people about 
the diversity and inclusion aspects of the workplaces. Then uh, we have certain strategies which can be uh, there for developing the element of uh, leadership presence and influence. The very first being self reflection and self awareness. So, leaders must first understand their strengths and weaknesses to develop their presence effectively. So, they should know about self reflection and they should be aware of themselves. So, self reflection exercises can be there. To understand themselves, there can be some kind of personality test, like for example, we have MBTI test, we have a test by Cattell also. So, we have n number of such tests which are already into play and those tests can be taken by the individuals to get to know about themselves. Then there can be some, some kind of exercises specifically highlighting the aspects of strengths of an individual and weaknesses of an individual. There can be some assessments for understanding the signature strengths of the individuals also. So, all these things can be done. Then uh, second strategy which can be employed for developing leadership presence and influence can be confidence. So, projecting assurance and competence is crucial for leadership presence. So, confidence inspires trust and respect from team members. So, some confidence boosting exercises can also be included in it. Then we have authenticity and vulnerability. So, leadership should embody authenticity and uh, vulnerability to foster trust and genuine connections with their teams. Then we have influence, the ability to persuade and motivate. others is a key component of leadership presence. So, a leader should be able to influence others, is able to direct the behaviors of others and uh, strong influencing skills are therefore important. So, we need to incorporate this element of increasing the influential skills among the individuals to drive organizational change. So, there has to be an element of continuous learning and development. Uh, leaderships and leaders should engage in ongoing self-improvement. They should continue to learn and seek feedback from trusted sources to enhance their presence and influence. Then uh, strategies may even include communication skills, both verbal and non-verbal skills are essential. And therefore, uh, we should try to develop the communication skills of the individuals to the best possible manner. Then emotional intelligence, understanding one's emotions and those of another, uh, those of others is again a very, very important element of leadership. And therefore, some kind of uh, strategies have to be there to build the emotional intelligence level of the individuals. Then we have networking and relationship building. Establishing authentic connections and deepening professional relationships. Is an important element and uh, definitely we should try our level best to incorporate these elements in it. Then is about adaptability. So, being adaptable and open to change allows leaders to navigate different situations effectively and maintain a strong presence. Then is about personal branding, building a powerful leadership brand through activities that align with the core strengths and values can enhance leadership presence and influence. So, this was about the various strategies for developing the leadership presence and influence. Now, we move to uh, some important statistics which will help us in gaining an insight into the leadership uh, development and identifying the leadership potential in employees. So, according to a study by Gallup, only 15 percent of employees worldwide are engaged in their jobs, indicating a significant opportunity for leadership development to improve their employee engagement and retention. So, research from Deloitte found that 86 percent of the employees, 86 percent of the organization cite leadership as one of their top talent challenges, highlighting the critical need for effective leadership development programs. So, organizations are finding 
leadership as one of their top talent challenges. A report by McKinsey and Company revealed that companies with diverse leadership teams are 33 percent more likely to outperform their peers in terms of profitability, in terms of productivity and emphasizing the importance of identifying and nurturing the diverse leadership talent. The Center for Creative Leadership found that 38 percent of the new leaders fail within their first 18 months in a new role, underscoring the importance of accurately identifying the leadership potential to prevent in uh, to prevent costly turnover and organizational disruptions. So, whenever the top leadership is hired, a lot of efforts are put in adequately training them, a lot of cost has to be uh, put into training them in, in order to provide them with adequate uh, opportunities in order to provide them with adequate development opportunities etc. But then uh, the Center for Creative Leadership found that 38 percent of the new leaders fail within their first 18 months. So, what does it indicate? It indicates that there is some important issue pertaining to identifying the leadership potential to prevent costly turnover and organizational disruptions. Another research from Harvard Business Review suggests that organizations with strong leadership development programs are 1.5 times more likely to be high performing, underscoring the positive impact of leadership development program on organizational success. So, there are several traces of researches which figure out the direct relation and the direct impact of leadership development, the effective leadership development and organizational success. So, if the leadership development program is effective, it will eventually lead to organizational success. The Corporate Leadership Council found that organizations with formalized succession planning processes are 2.5 times more likely to be high performing highlighting the importance of identifying and grooming future leaders proactively. So, there are multiple organizations which follow the practice of succession planning that is identifying the top uh, you know potential leaders who can occupy the uh, position of uh, top leadership at any uh, point of time. So, it is found that those organizations who are good at succession planning are able to be more high performing and uh, if you talk in terms of numbers, it is 2.5 times they are more likely to be high performing. According to Society for Human Resource Management that is SHRM, 58 percent of the HR professionals report that the organization lacks a formal process for identifying the high potential employees, indicating a gap in the talent management process that could hinder the organization success. So, when the organizations are uh, lacking in some kind of uh, mechanism for identifying the top uh, notch talent or say high potential employees, then they fail to make a high performance team also. And in today's era, high performing teams really assume a lot of significance. So, after this we move to identifying the potential leaders within the organization to nurture the leadership skills in employees. So, basically it is about the performance based recognition. We will try to take a, you know we will try to talk of this process with some examples and relevant statistics also. So, performance based recognition company X Y Z we have taken some hypothetical examples here and by means of those examples I would like to highlight how things work. So, XYZ company implements a performance based recognition program that identifies the top performing employees who consistently demonstrate leadership qualities such as initiative, accountability and collaborations. So, these employees are acknowledged and rewarded for their contribution and they are also provided with the opportunities for leadership development. So, the communication is very clear and transparent right in the beginning itself 
and the KPIs, the key performance indicators are also specifically mentioned before the people. They are told about uh, various things such as initiative, accountability and collaboration and they are going to be measured on uh, such domains. So it's a completely incentive based program if the in individuals uh, you know, show extraordinary skills in terms of initiative taking ability, their accountability and collaboration, they are incentivized for it and also they are provided with the opportunities for leadership development. There is uh, a statistic uh, associated with it. So according to a study by Corporate Leadership Council, organizations that effectively recognize and reward the high potential employees, they are 17% more likely to be the market leaders in their industry. So it's important to reward the high potential employees because you do not know and you cannot even imagine what contributions can they bring to the table. Then it's about talent reviews and succession planning. So there was this organization company ABC which conducts regular talent reviews and succession planning sessions merely to assess the potential of employees across different levels and departments. So by evaluating the employees performance, skills and leadership potential, the company identifies individuals who are ready to take on the roles of leadership. These employees are then provided with targeted development opportunities to prepare them for leadership position. So the, uh, at the hindsight, a lot of efforts are being put in and a lot of uh, things are going on to keep a check on the people who can, really found to, who can really be found to be the potential leaders in the organizations. So there was this research by Corporate Leadership Council which found that organizations who have uh, formalized succession planning mechanisms for the organization, they are 2.5 times more likely to be high performing in critical roles which they follow. Then is about 360 degree feedback assessments. Company DEF, again a hypothetical example, utilizes 360 degree feedback assessments to gather insights from multiple stakeholders. So what is this 360 degree feedback approach? It is an approach in which the feedback is not just take, taken from your uh, superior, but the feedback is also taken from multiple stakeholders such as your peers, your colleagues, your seniors, your juniors, your subordinates, your, uh, you know, the other stakeholders associated with the organization such as uh, the customers, etc. So this comprehensive feedback helps employees identify those individuals who exhibit leadership qualities and areas for development. So employees receive reg regular feedback reports and participate in coaching sessions to enhance their leadership skills. A statistic in this regard could be a study by Development Dimensions International which revealed that organizations that use 360 degree feedback assessments are 23 percent more likely to have leaders who outperform their peers in key leadership roles. So organizations have to wisely use the right kinds of uh, assessments and evaluation criteria to understand what they have in free for the organization. Then we have leadership development programs. Company GHI, again a hypothetical company, which offers leadership development programs designs designed to nurture the skills and competencies of high potential employees. So these programs include workshops, seminars, coaching sessions, experiential learning opportunities, tailored specifically to develop the essential leadership skills required by the individuals such as communication, decision making, critical thinking skills, uh, time management skills, empathy, self-awareness uh, sessions to the people, emotional intelligence aspects, etc. So this organization is offering all kinds of leadership programs to its uh, people designed to nurture the skills and competence required for high performance employees or high potential employees. Now the statistic in this regard says that according to a research by Center for Creative Leadership, organizations which are investing in leadership development programs are 84 percent more effective at driving the business results compared to those that do not. So again an important thing to address 
an important element to take care of. Now it is about tailoring the leadership development programs to individual needs and assessment. So when it comes to uh, tailoring the leadership programs to individual needs and assessment, the very first thing which comes into play here is individual assessment. We need to conduct regular assessments, the personality in inventories, the C 360 degree feedback mechanism, skill assessments to understand the strengths of the employees, the weaknesses of employees, the key areas uh, that they can exhibit their uh, talent in and uh, definitely the leadership potential also. So using the insights gained from assessments to tailor the leadership development programs can really prove to be very, very productive for the organization because they help in addressing the specific developmental needs and capitalize on the employee's strengths. So according to a study by Society for Human Resource Management, that is SHRM, 79% of the HR professionals reported that using assessments during the employee selection process led to improved candidate quality. A report by Gallup found that employees who receive regular feedback from their managers are 3.5 times more likely to be engaged at work. So providing them with regular feedback and constructive feedback would definitely enhance their experience at work and they are likely to be engaged in work more. Then it's about personalized learning path. It's an important thing. Work with employees to identify their career goals, their aspirations, their areas of interest, their points of strengths, their points of weaknesses within leadership. And then develop personalized learning mechanisms for them that align with the employee's career aspirations, incorporating a mix of formal training on-the-job training, coaching and mentorship opportunities. So at the, at the end of the day, if you are taking care of the employees, the organization can always expect some good return from the employees also. So a research by LinkedIn Learning found that 58% of the employees prefer learning opportunities that are personalized to their individual career path. So they would want customization in their uh, you know, learning path determination or individual career path. A study by IBM further found that personalized training and learning paths can improve employee productivity by 30%. So we have so many evidences to prove that personalized learning paths and personalized career paths can really create a lot of difference and thereby enhance the productivity of the concern to a large extent. Then it's about flexibility and choice. So if you are offering flexibility in choice and leadership programs in terms of accommodating different learning styles, preferences and uh, you know scheduling constraints. So employees with options to participate in variety of learning experiences such as workshop, online uh, courses, peer learning groups and self-directed study can really make a lot of difference. So there was a study conducted by PwC which found that 85, sorry, 90 percent of millennials believe that the availability of professional development opportunities is essential when choosing an employer. So everybody is looking for out for the professional development opportunities and it is the need of the hour. So millennials uh, take it as a very, very clear cut um, you know, need and motivation for them to look for an employer who provides them with adequate and ample career growth opportunities because they want to take the strategic control of their career. They really do not want to you know, rely on anyone for their career. They want to have a strategic control of their career and therefore these kinds of people, I mean these uh, sets of people, this cohort is specifically looking for this salient feature when choosing an, an employer. So according to LinkedIn's workplace learning report, 58% of the employees prefer to learn at their own pace. Then we have some targeted skill development uh, wherein we design development activities and experience targeting these uh, competencies such as communication workshops, decision making simulations, project leadership opportunities, etc. The survey by uh, Harvard Business Review found that 86% of the employees believe 
that the organization's leadership development programs are not effective in developing the skills they need. And according to a study by Development Dimensions International, organizations that provide targeted leadership development programs and 115% more likely to have stronger financial performance. So everything has to be very, very skill oriented and personalized and customized according to the requirement of the individuals who are taking that program. Then it's about ongoing feedback support. When we talk about ongoing feedback support, it's about providing regular feedback and support to the employees throughout their leadership program and attaching some kind of mentors and coaches to them so that they can develop their skills in the best possible manner and they're able to develop their competencies also in the best possible manner. So this would foster a culture of open communication and dialogue between the employee and their mentors, their coaches, their supervisors to track progress, to address the challenges and celebrate achievements. So a report by Global Force found that 69% of employees say they would work harder if they felt uh, their efforts were better recognized. So they look for recognition of their efforts. They look for you know, the provision of uh, constructive feedback in the organization. Another study by Gallup found that employees who receive regular feedback are 12.5% more likely to strongly agree uh, that they are motivated to do outstanding work. Then the organizations may think of giving some stretch assignments and experiential learning platforms to the people so that they can practice the leadership skills in the real world situation. So providing them adequate support and guidance to help employees navigate these challenges and experiences effectively and extract maximum learning value would do. We've been talking about a lot of self-reflection exercises, growth exercises, which can foster a culture of creativity in the organization. And therefore, encouraging the self-reflection and growth can really make a lot of difference. It can create tremendous difference. So facilitating these opportunities for employees to set goals, track their progress, and take ownership of their leadership journey really would count. Then it's about uh, providing opportunities for growth and advancement through job rotation and cross-functional assignments. According to a report by Deloitte, 78% of millennials are influenced by how innovative the company is when deciding if they want to work there. And another research says that organizational job rotation programs have 12% higher employee retention rate. So it means that people are, you know, they find the same nature of work to be very monotonous and they would definitely look out for some kind of job rotation and cross-functional assignments. In context of mentoring and coaching, research by International Coach Federation found that 86% of the companies reported that they recouped their investment on coaching and more. And another study shows that organizations with formal mentoring programs have 20% lower turnover rate. Here are some examples of leadership programs, leadership development programs, uh, which have really been very, very successful to name the few. Associa's competency-based leadership program focuses on specific competencies that are important for frontline leaders. So each weekly session covers a specific competency and leaders take a self-assessment before and after the program. Then there's this organization, Intute, whose leadership program is a top to bottom cascade of learn teach, where directors put together and present capstone projects to senior leaders. So this ensures that learning is applied on the job and turns into behavior. Then Dell Tech's leadership development program includes mentorship, where high performing individuals, high potential individuals are paired with the experienced leaders who provide guidance and support to them. Then Randstad is the one which focuses on developing leaders who can drive results inspire teams and create a culture of innovation. So the program includes a lot of workshops, coaching and mentoring, as well as opportunity to work on real life business challenges. Then Adobe's leadership development program includes a mix of classroom training, online sessions for the people, online courses, and on the job training mechanisms also. So the program is designed to help develop leaders the skills they need to 
drive innovation, build high performing teams. Then the next one is by Cigna. So Cigna's leadership development program have a more fundamental and more departmental focus with individuals recruited specifically for specific areas such as marketing, sales, technology, so on and so forth. These individuals have access to mentorship and dedicated program manager who watches over their progress and growth. So this is how they do. Then all states leadership training program which includes cross-functional training through rotations. Participants gain valuable experience and training in different departments. And these programs are designed to challenge the participants and provide them with necessary insights, perspectives, and experiences. Another one is by Deloitte. Uh, leadership programs include Deloitte University. And uh, it provides live and virtual classrooms team-based learning, networking opportunities, and many more things for the individuals. The university aside, Deloitte strives to use L&D programs, that is the learning and development programs, to boost the inclusion efforts by running programs such as the Emerging Leader Development Program and Women's Leadership Program. Then there's another organization called as NBC Universal. It has a page program which has been running since 1933 and provides leaders with an opportunity to volunteer their time and gain hands-on experience in making wise decisions, networking and answering immediate challenges. So this was about some of the very interesting examples of leadership uh, programs being uh, you know, taken up by various organizations. I would just like to summarize whatever we have done in today's session. We tried to touch upon some of the leadership training essentials with some relevant examples and some uh, statistics. Uh, we tried to touch upon how to nurture leadership skills in employees. And uh, we also uh, discussed several you know, good leadership development programs being adopted by various organizations of repute. With this, I would like to thank you. Thank you so much.